on this episode of the SSI Executive Conversations podcast, Darwin is joined by Ted Berg, Chief Strategy Officer at Dymacron and industry leader with over 35 years of commercial and executive experience. Ted and Darwin talk about raising capital through crowdfunding and give an update on Dymacron's product and leadership. This episode is split into two parts, so make sure to check back soon for part two. Well, I couldn't be more excited to have uh, Ted Bird as our guest on the SSI Executive Conversations podcast today. Ted is a, a, a friend of ours for a while now, an incredible industry expert that many people know, over 35 years of global commercial leadership experience in the medical device industry. Uh, currently the chief strategy officer at Dymacron. And there, uh, I think a lot of people are kind of already familiar with Dymacron, but uh, commercial, pre-commercial startup has an incredible breakthrough next generation technology, uh, artificial cervical, uh, cervical disc that really gives you more of the, of the, of the natural human notion, uh, motion as well as just incredible reduction in, uh, in wear debris. Um, he is uh, also the principal of, of the uh, uh, Bird Medical Group, uh, which is a strategic management and consulting go-to-market uh, company that provides all kinds of direction and med tech uh, commercial solutions. Um, I mean, Ted, you've you got so many, so many incredible experiences in industry with Titan, Spine, uh, with uh, the Zucker Institute, with OrthoFix, the Pew Synthes, Medtronic. We almost would have to just spend the whole podcast talking about all the incredible experience that you have, uh, you know, Boston Scientific, J&J. Um, so welcome. Uh, we did a webinar about a year and a half ago that was extremely well received and attended and, and had a white paper off of that. And I'm excited to have you on today to talk about a couple of key topics. I'm excited to be here, Darwin. Thank you for inviting me and uh, look forward to catching up with you and, and telling your audience some more about Dymacron and, and what I've seen in, the, in not just at Dymacron, but in the market in the last 12 to 18 months. I mean, it's been incredible, all the activity and as if the pandemic wasn't enough, but there is a lot of uh, positive things going on. And uh, from the disruption has come a lot of positive and advances in technology. Um, well, why don't we start out with, uh, I think, you know, for me, uh, reggae funding, I think the first time I heard that was two and a half, three years ago, and I was like, totally had no clue what the person was talking about. Um, since then, have gotten a little more educated, have gotten involved in a couple of companies through that process, and uh, crowdfunding is another way, and I believe crowdfunding is how Dimacron uh, started the process, but uh, I think this is a great opportunity for you to share with your background and incredible experience how you went about the process of, of educating yourself on that and, and then the board at Dymacron uh, to allow you to move forward in growth funding and what a unique opportunity for, for many of us out there uh, to be able to support Dymacron in the direction it's going. Yeah, thanks, uh, Darwin, for that opportunity because that is very new uh, news. I mean, not just for the whole field, the whole area of uh, a new alternative for capital fundraising, but very new for Dimagron. Mm -hmm. uh, we just launched our uh, Reg A Plus uh, equity crowdfunding campaign about a month ago, right after the new year, towards the end of January. And um, I first learned about it two years ago when I first attended the LSI uh, conference in Dana Point, California, Scott Pentel's meeting with the Life Science Intelligence, where I think we first met actually a couple, at that right. meeting. And that was the second time I'd heard about it and really didn't understand it very well at all. So, yes. Yeah. There was an individual there that um, Stephen Brock, uh, give him credit. He, he, uh, he contacted me and, and said, Ted, were you aware that there was a new rule that passed this year, 2021, that increase the capital fundraising limit for this new uh, online fundraising uh, arm of, of capital fundraising. And it, uh, it allowed private companies to raise uh, 
two different categories. One is called Reg CF, which stands for crowdfunding. The old limit used to be a measly a million dollar cap that a company could could raise under online through uh, going to uh, uh, promote uh, the raise to unaccredited investors online. They rate this Congress raised that in 2021, just a couple of years ago, to five million a year. And that's you know a fairly easy pathway. And that's to, annually. To, that's every year. Every year. Every year. And, and and you don't have to go uh, to get fully qualified by the SEC. So the requirements are are you know not not too bad to to go that route. Uh, the other the other avenue the other route where you can raise more money is called Reg A, not to be confused with the music Reg A. <laughs> right. But uh, Reg A plus, which used to be, um, let's see, I think it was ten million. I've got it written down here. Uh, it was fifteen. Let me get that right. Uh, ten ten million before twenty twenty one. They raised that to seventy five million dollars a year. Wow. So all all of this online, you know, crowdfunding capability actually started in. 2012, there was a, a congressional act called uh, Jumpstart Our uh, Startups, uh, the Jobs Act in 2012. By the time it was fully implemented, it was probably 2015 or 16. Okay. So uh, just some numbers so you can kind of get a feel for it. In 2016, 188 companies raised money, private companies raised money online through Reg CF. 2022, there were 1,584 companies, and they raised 506 million dollars. You know, last year. Okay, that's you know just so you have the number. Now, the total. What would you guess is the total number of private, uh, privately held companies in the U.S.? How many do you think there are in the U.S.? Privately, I I really don't. Um, so, I'll guess 3,000. Yeah, 30 million. So there's 30 million. <laughs> <laughs> you I just shouldn't have guessed. Mom, <laughs> mom and pop, you know, just private private companies. You know, America is a land of opportunity. But, you know, what happens, especially when there's the economic, you know, hard times, these companies start to start to, start to it becomes difficult. And, and, and the pandemic made it even more difficult for Absolutely. businesses, you know, restaurants, um, you know, car washes, whatever it and was. I guess, I guess when I like you talk about that, because if we're talking about every you know, non yeah, not just medical, company right. that makes perfect sense. I guess I was I was thinking more about companies that may have gone through this process of additional funding. So that that yeah. number makes a lot more sense. Just to put That's it in perspective, so between the, the year when it really started to last year, in the Reg A plus area, um, 2016, I, I I pulled these numbers from a group called Crowdfund Insider. Uh, a guy called Adam Dix that puts on great webinars to educate yourself in the space. Right. But uh, 175 million dollars raised in 2016. Last year, 1.8 billion dollars raised uh, online equity crowdfunding through Reg A Plus. Um, now that compares to uh, the number for traditional capital fundraising, which is called Reg D. That's where you're okay. only allowed to go after accredited investors. $148 billion of private money was raised in 2022. So only $1.8 billion out of $148 billion. So it's a small piece of the total amount was raised through unaccredited, you know, just online investors. But it's just the start. It's just the beginning. The, the tide is starting to turn. So what I did, Darwin, after learning about this, I spent a year, over a year, just studying the space. Okay. Attending all of the webinars that I could, um, learning about the regulations, what the costs are to, to get involved, because many entrepreneurs or business owners or CEOs or leaders of companies, particularly in our space, in the life science med tech industry, find it difficult, uh, especially these days when, when the financial picture is not that great, the amount of institutional capital and VC deals is, is, is getting harder and harder, even for more sophisticated companies that are ready for a, to go public, IPO. The IPO, IPO market disappeared last year. So right. it was a difficult environment. So 
uh, for companies that have innovation that 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 uh, can really change people's lives and and need that capital, many of them turn the lights off. You know, they they get they enter that valley of death and they don't have an option. Now equity crowdfunding has come along and allowed the retail private everyday uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith of America or Johnson of America to to get in and invest on a deal that they may have interest in uh, just because they like it or they may have uh, they may suffer f- from that particular um, right. problem and they know it's a solution for them or their family members and it's an impact investment for them and otherwise they wouldn't get that opportunity so two two questions for you and for for, for me it took me a little bit of time to understand and get comfortable and should you know disclaimer I think a month ago or so I you know uh, somebody else actually posted about uh, the situation, and I took part in that. So I should make that that disclaimer because uh, I believe in the product. I believe in the obviously in the leadership there and what this can do for patient populations. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And then I, I've I've done it with two other companies too. So I, sh- I should make that disclaimer. But uh, the the two questions I have is from your your side of the seat. Once you start that process. How long does it take to have the money where you can start to invest and benefit it from it at, at the company? And um, how, how challenging was it to get the board to think about this completely different approach to helping fund your growth? Yeah, no, that, it, it was a challenge. You know, I, I uh, generally um, personally believe in, 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 in finding different ways to solve problems, you know, whether it's a, a management problem or any issue. Uh, so I, I, I saw equity crowdfunding as, as a way to solve the problem of, of having difficulty attracting that institutional, you know, capital money in the spine space. So we're a spine company. And in general, spine companies find it difficult because there's been a lot of spine companies that the educated institutional capital investors have um, failed with and, and, and they're gun shy on the spine market. So they're, they're more interested in, in other spaces now, wearables and, and digital technology and things like that. So right. number one, number two, if you have a, a product that uh, like Dimacron that require, is a class three FDA class that requires a, a, a pre-market, a PMA study, much an investigational process. device exemption, that's a, a five to seven year process to complete um, and for a venture capitalist uh, or institutional investor, that time horizon may be too long for their money, for their fund, and they may be scared a little bit of the risk. You know, can that company execute, you know, on that trial successfully? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, instead of just beating my head against the wall with, with those two factors, having a class three product and being a spine company, that's what piqued my interest when I saw equity crowdfunding. Dimacron has been very successful through a dedicated group of owners, share owners, shareholders. Mainly the founder and the founder's family and a network of angels have, have, have continu- continued today and have, have funded the company to date. But to be successful in the artificial cervical disc market, the most important market is the U.S. market. It's the biggest market in the world. Absolutely. And you have to do really two studies. You have to do a, a single level study and you also have to do a separate two level study. Each study is going to cost about $20 million. So that's 40, 40 million additional dollars that the existing shareholders would need to come up with. They could, but they've already put a, you know, a, a decent amount in already. They would like right. to see others come in and join them. So we've started, we've been about uh, into it for about a month now. And the other, the other thing that's really exciting, Darwin, is the kind of impact that it has in terms of raising the awareness of your company and your technology. Uh, you're, 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 you're increasing your, your fan base, so to speak, where you've got- And how has that, how's that been? What is the response that you've received from, from the marketplace? And that's one of the things I love about it. I've certainly shared with friends, family, and my network you know, I'm not, I'm not your, I'm not their stockbroker. I'm not here. Obviously I have a pretty high risk tolerance. You have a pretty high risk tolerance relevant to where you're at, but at the same time, we believe in the product, um, you know, to start a company, you have to have a a pretty decent risk tolerance, but 
Um, at the same time, the ability for people to get in and invest in something that through previous avenues they would not have because of the amount of money that they would have to just to get in the door w- wouldn't have access to. Yeah. So we, we just in the in the last four weeks, we have attracted over 30,000 individuals to our invest, you know, dot dimicron uh, dot com, which is a, a special page. And by the way, I have to give the disclaimer that uh, it's important that any investor uh, read the materials that they're all right. there on that Web page, uh, because this is a reg A plus, which is part of the requirement for, to raise uh, you know, more than the five million cap of the reg CF. You have to get qualified by the SEC. And that, okay. that's yeah. that's a process. It's it's not quite like going public, but it's similar to going public. You have to have two years of, of, of uh, gap audited financials. Uh, you have to um, really have, you know, your financial house in order and you have to be prepared for it. But it's it's not as stringent. You have to as being a public company and doing doing quarterly, you know, analyst uh, meetings and things like that. But there are there are SEC requirements and it can take up to four or months or longer to get through that process. So you can't just flip a switch and do it in a couple of weeks. I just get right. It's not yeah. transactional. So so it took me a took me a few months to prepare and also convince the board at Dimacron because they, they're a, a fairly conservative group, uh, you know, primarily out of Utah where the company's based. And uh, who's this Ted Bird guy coming along telling them about, you know, digital marketing and, and Google ads and Facebook ads and TikTok uh, advertising. And, you know, the, most of them didn't know what TikTok was. So <laughs> it's uh, not that I did either. but. <laughs> It, I, I knew about it, but uh, I didn't know we could actually advertise our. our I just uh, thought it was for kids to do dance videos, or yeah, I thought so too. But the digital marketing experts are telling me, nope, your videos are on TikTok now. So I didn't have to learn a, a new dance move. But well, um, so here well, we that, are. We're, we're we're into it, and we we're 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 very excited about the momentum that we've experienced so far. For the video recording of this podcast, along with additional resources make sure to find us on the web at SureigSolutions.com or follow us on social media and LinkedIn at Shurig Solutions.